So today I have a skeleton 2D node rigged on top of this dinosaur skeleton. And what we're going to fix is when you walk and return to the idle animation, it snaps back very unnaturally. Also when you run, it snaps back. And when you jump, it snaps back. And we're going to fix this by adding an additional animation between the walk and the idle, where we capture the position of all of the bones at the beginning and then interpolate them to the idle state. And in doing so, we can do this for the jump and the run at the same time. So currently, it's just going directly to idle. So we're going to add return to idle. It's going to be a copy of the idle where we shifted all of these keys over to the side. You have to have room at the beginning to actually capture the new keys, but all of these are going to be continuous to start with, and we want them to be capture. And instead of going through and clicking every single one of these, which would be amazingly tedious, we're going to write a script on the animation player. Don't forget to make the script a tool, otherwise it will not work. So the first thing we're going to do is enumerate the different types of modes that we can have. This comes directly from the docs. Then we're going to put a set get on this variable. That way when we change it over here, so you're clicked onto the animation player and you have this extra variable here. Every time we change this, it's going to call this function. And the first thing you always have to do in a set get is actually update the variable that you are changing. Otherwise this won't change it'll always stick on continuous because it you don't actually update it. Then we're going to loop through every track in return to idle. I manually added the string that you need to find the animation. So then it'll loop through every track because we have get track count. And then we'll, it will get that animation again and we will change this value of the track that we are on to the new mode. So we will click capture and you don't see it update anything because it doesn't refresh the animation player when you do this. But if you click out and get back in by clicking this down here, you will see that the capture has updated on all of these and you can switch, easily switch it back to whatever you want. Now, when you run this, you're going to notice something that's still wrong. It captures and then interpolates it to where we want, but the capture sticks each time. As you can see, it glitches no matter which way we go. It captures that and it sets that as a key, so then it continues to loop that spot, and that's clearly not what we want. So we're going to add another track, and we're going to call method, and we're going to put this in the player. And in the player script, we have a function called next animation, and all that does is it gets the animation player and it plays whichever animation we pass through it as a string. So we come down here, we'll set the key to about here. We'll insert a key, type in next animation. And if you remember, it takes an argument. So we're going to go to the arguments. I want it to be a string and we will put the, and we will put idle. Once it reaches this point of the animation, it will immediately switch to the idle animation. The end product is this, and we don't have that weird glitch at the end. So if you have any questions about this or any questions about Skeleton 2Ds, let me know. I will leave a link in the description for a video done by GD Quest. Uh, they explain how to make Skeleton 2Ds and bones in pretty good detail, so I don't want to redo what they've already made. But this is just a feature I thought more people should know about, and it's kind of hidden, so I hope this video helped you out.